Hi, my name is Andy Malley, and this is Glimmer DSL for SWT tutorial number 13. So uh, last time we went through a pretty advanced sample called Hello Tree that showed us the tree widget, which is a very one of the most advanced uh, widgets in SWT. Uh, today we're going to continue in that track and go through another uh, extremely important widget for business applications. In fact, it might be the most important one, uh, table. So we're going to go through Hello Table. So let's get started by launching the sample. So as you can see, uh, we have a table over here and we the app uh, is basically a, a baseball playoff schedule app that lets us uh, check out all the available games and then uh, book make a booking for a game. So um, just to show off the app, uh, I'm going to basically fit, first of all show you that uh, it's a table that has one, two, three, four, five, six columns um, with different pieces of data in them. We have a date, time, um, uh, the, the name of the ballpark, the home team, the away team, and then a promotion. Um, and then here in this combo box, I can select the different types of playoff games. So uh, NLDS, for example, is showing us some uh, teams in the NLDS uh, playoffs. Um, and then I can get back to the World Series. Uh, and then if you, uh, for example, select the second row, notice how this button suddenly got enabled. And now we can book the selected game and it says, okay, thank you for booking Chicago Cups versus Boston Red Sox at Wrigley Field, etc., etc. Obviously everything, uh, the data right now is all fictional. This is only a sample, but it could be representing a real... Uh, app that could be used, for example, by the clerks uh, at the baseball uh, parks for booking games for their uh, baseball parks, um, or, or maybe the MLB or etc. So, I mean, this is again, this is fictional. It's not associated with the MLB in any way, but uh, it's just showing us a real world kind of example of how to build a desktop application using a table. Um, so uh, a lot of things are at play over here. So I'm going to click on the code and start going through the code. So first of all, we have a model that is a baseball game. That's the main model. Um, and I set up in it a whole bunch of fictional data uh, for under the different kinds of uh, playoffs that are going on. And uh, for example, the playoff type options are all the playoff games uh, keys. So if we go back to this uh, all playoff games method, class method, uh, it basically gives us, these are the keys. So these are all the available types that we saw in the dropdown. Uh, so um, if we were to scroll down, these are the different attributes on the model. Uh, date, time, home team, away team, ballpark, promotion. And uh, this is showing an extremely advanced example of building a model for a Glimmer app. Typically, you don't need to include Glimmer or include a Glimmer data binding observable model. Um, uh, models are automatically enhanced by Glimmer when data bound to the view as observable models uh, so that you don't have to do any of that. In fact, the model code could be completely oblivious to the view so that you can test it uh, very easily that way. However, uh, sometimes you might want to uh, utilize advanced uh, features from Glimmer manually or directly. Like uh, if you mix the Glimmer uh, uh, module in general, it gives us access to the to the DSL. Obviously, you don't want to build views inside the model, so we're not mixing Glimmer for that reason. Uh, we're mixing it just to use this observe keyword, which builds an observer. So that way you can build custom observers. Um, and then if you... Um, enhance it as an observable model, you're just making it obvious that we have access to this notify observers method, which you get automatically inside the model once it gets enhanced as an observable model. So if you ever want to use notify observers uh, directly manually, um, usually it's not needed. Usually on update of any of the attributes, notify observers are automatically called. Uh, however, if you want to do it manually for some extreme, you know, extremely advanced custom examples, you can mix in the module yourself and then call notify observers uh, in the code. So, I mean, this is showing a real world exa advanced example where that might get needed. Uh, it's not usually, uh, 
in general, it's not needed, but there are a few, you know, rare cases where it might get needed. Uh, in any case, uh, you know, we have a whole bunch of methods, including a book method. Uh, and this book method right now, all it does is just builds this string that says thank you for booking. And then it prints the 2S method, which, you know, gives us the, uh, the message that we saw when we clicked on the book button. Um, however, let's jump into the view code. So as you can see, uh, we have a shell. Uh, it's got a title of hello table and we have a background image. That's something we haven't used much before. And that's the image that you saw uh, in the background, but also we have image. So image is basically the icon of the app. So if I were to com command tab into it, see now the icon of the app is basically the baseball uh, state uh, park uh, image. In fact, uh, you can see it over here as well. So, I mean, this is uh, uh, one way of uh, giving uh, the app an icon is by setting the image attribute on shell. Uh, but additionally, you saw there's also a background image, which is uh, a baseball park. So um, if we were to go into other um, widgets, so the label is pretty simple, not much there, but the combo, uh, we already went through uh, combo data binding last time. And I showed you an example of how you can uh, data bind it to an attribute and then by convention, it'll expect that there is a method called playoff underscore type underscore options, which will give it all the options for the uh, combo like NLDS, ALDS, etc. And this is precisely what we saw above uh, when we looked at the playoff type options, which, get, you know, it extracted the keys from the hash that's above in this uh, uh, all playoff games method. So uh, let's proceed further. So finally, we're getting into the, the most interesting part, which is the table widget. Uh, so we have a table, but not only do we have a table, we have a table that's editable. Uh, so this is just showing off an example of how to edit a table. So not only are tables, uh, uh, you know, showing you read only data, but also they show you read and write data. You can actually edit any of those cells. And um, if you know anything about building desktop apps in other languages like C++ or Java, uh, you would know that building tables is an extremely complex problem that involves a lot of uh, like models like table viewer and uh, registering a lot of extra things. And it's an extremely complex widget usually. However, Glimmer simplifies it to the bare minimum essence of what a table is. So even table editing is simple here. So let, let me start showing you examples of table editing. So if I were to click here, it gave me now a, a combo for editing at the date. So I can just, for example, uh, postpone the date. It's, it's just a, an example of, let's, let's just say, an MLB clerk trying to edit the data. Uh, so the time, same thing. I get a time uh, editing widget, so then I can shift the time a bit. Let's just say by 10 minutes. Um, and uh, I cannot edit the ballpark directly, but I can edit the home team. And that would uh, demonstrate, uh, for example, switching the ballpark automatically. So, I mean, these are all very advanced, you know, uh, applications of uh, Glimmer. Um, and this is, I can edit the away team. And I can edit the promotion. Let's just say a free t-shirt that you get when you go to the game. So, um, as you can see, it's an extremely advanced editing at the table. <laughs> Usually you write pages and pages of code in Java or C++ or other languages uh, to, to do this in a desktop app. Uh, so uh, fortunately, Glimmer uh, takes a more of a declarative approach. So you could just declare everything and uh, write the bare minimum code that would describe those editors. So let's go through that. So we have uh, six columns, so a game date, a game time, a ballpark, home, t home team, away team, and promotion. But then you can see on each one of them, in addition to other properties like width uh, and which uh, sort property um, in the model should map to that column, we also have an editor. So here we have a date dropdown. So that's, uh, so basically in the symbol, you can pass it the name of the widget that you would like to use as the editor for that column. So I use the date dropdown. And that's the bare minimum you could, you know, 
you could uh, the bare minimum code you need to describe what the editor is. And then I just mapped it to the model property um, date time. Uh, same here. Here I, I, I use the time editor, which is a different widget. It's the time widget. And I mapped it to date time. Same exact property can be edited for the time alone or for the date alone. So um, uh, the ballpark has an editor of none. As you can saw, I couldn't edit it because it's not edited directly. You edit it through the home team. The home team is just a combo. And the type of the combo is a read-only combo, meaning I cannot type text in it. I can only choose options. Um, so this combo, for example, uh, this one, as you can see, we could only choose options. We couldn't type with the keyboard uh, any new data, but you could also have that type of combo if you needed it. And um, so as you can see, the home team, the away team, etc. cetera. Um, sort properties are also interesting. So, the, so usually uh, every column will get sorted automatically uh, with the data that it has. Uh, based on the 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 basically the attribute or model property that's data bound to it. Um, however, you can also customize it to uh, sort by a specific attribute on the model. Before we go there, though, uh, let's go down and check out the data binding of the table. So, if you want to data bind the items of the table, you just type a single line of code in Glimmer. Uh, DSL for SWT. That's all it is. In Java, it was a you know a page, maybe two pages of code in order to data bind a table. But here, it's just uh, all you have to do is specify. Uh, basically, so we want to data bind it to the schedule attribute on the baseball game, and the schedule is has to be an array because it's a table of a lot of elements. So the assumption is that it's an array. And then column properties are basically um, uh, all the attributes that will get picked in order from the model to map to the columns that you saw over here. And again, it's convention over configuration. It assumes the same exact order you have for the columns here and it maps them to them. So that means the first column will get a data bound to game date on the model. Second column will get data bound to game time, etc. However, um, the editor is data bound to a different attribute. So the editor attribute, uh, if specified, will customize which attribute on the model will be, will be the edit the editing attribute. Uh, whereas in, there are other cases where like home team, uh, so home team is data bound to home team attribute, and the editor will edit it through the same attribute. Um, so uh, so as you can see, I mean these are all the that's what the data binding resulted in, is basically filling all those records. So every uh, row is a model, is a single model. Schedule, by the way, the schedule method over here uh, on baseball game will return an array. So let's go back to uh, schedule. There it is. It'll give us all playoff games by default, uh, which is over here. And it'll intentionally select one type of playoff. So, you know, it started with the World Series. Um, so this gives us an array, but then the array is mapped to each record through the column, um, uh, basically, properties. So this is what we saw over here under items, column properties. So as you can see, column properties is an array that will map in the same order as the columns that are declared on the table widget. Uh, selection could be data bound too. So if you want a data bind selection, uh, which is you know which row is highlighted. Uh, again, that's uh, that can be done declaratively. So we just data bind it to the selected game attribute on baseball game, the class. Uh, and this could be an object also, an instance. It doesn't have to be a class, but I use the class here because uh, I kind of use the singleton, the singleton pattern in a way. Uh, uh, but I mean, you can have an instance as well. Um, you can declare this default uh, sort on the table. So by default, they were sorted by date. Um, and then additional sort properties, meaning after the first default uh, sort, what should it be sorted by next? So, I mean, it's uh, you can specify five columns to be all used in sorting. So that means it'll sort by date first. 
And then if there are multiple days that are the same, it'll sort by time next. And if that's the same, it'll sort by, you know, the next attribute next, etc., etc. So that's the benefit of additional sort uh, properties. Um, so now, uh, if we go back here, as, as I explained, like the sort property could use an attribute that's different from the attribute that's data bound to the model. So game date is the attribute that will retrieve the data to uh, display in the table, but then this will uh, retrieve, this will be used for sorting only. So that means if I click on this column, see, they just got sorted and then I can reverse the sort. I can sort by time, reverse it. I can uh, sort by ballpark, I can sort by home team, away team, promotion, etc. cetera, uh, or, and then go back to game date. So, um, so that demonstrates uh, sorting. Um, this is, uh, here is a, an initial example of menus. Um, so this is a, a pop-up menu. So if you declare a menu inside a widget, uh, usually you mean you want a, a pop-up menu. Um, and it's got one menu item that is book. And if I select the menu item, it'll book the selected game. Uh, also below, there's a button that says book selected game. That's the button that got enabled through this unidirectional data binding as soon as we selected a game. Uh, and it triggers the book selected game, which will open a message box. And that's the message box we saw. So, so we actually did a booking through this button before, but you can also do it by right clicking on a record and then booking. Again, this is like declare. This was declaratively added. Usually, it's you know pages of code. If you do it in a, another programming language other than Ruby and you know without Glimmer, but here it's just we declared it and it happens. Basically, we have now a book menu on the on the records. So um, that pretty much covers this sample. Um, it should give you a pretty good idea on how to use the table widget. Uh, so if you want to learn more about the Glimmer DSL for SWT project, uh, check out the GitHub uh, project.